Good afternoon, everyone. My PhD topic is about the effects of tobacco products on oral tissues, and I would like to present my 12 months progress. So my name is Orsia Vámos. I'm a PhD student and a second year resident at the Department of Prostodontics at Semmelweis University. My vision is to spread awareness of the harmful effect of tobacco products, and I would like to promote prevention and cessation. And to achieve this, my mission is to make a comparison on the effect of tobacco products and uh, traditional and alternative tobacco products. So here you can see the list of my specific goals. Currently, I am working on two systematic review and meta-analysis. I started the first one in September and the second one in December. So let's move on to my first project, uh, which is investigating the effect of tobacco products on peri-implant tissues. Peri-implant diseases are defined as inflammatory lesions of the surrounding peri-implant tissues. Peri-implant mucositis involves only the mucosa, while peri-implantitis involves both the mucosa and the underlying bone structure. If these are not treated properly, patients can lose implants. We know that smoking is one of the main risk factors of peri-implant diseases and its role has been numerously investigated, but in recent years, alternative tobacco products appeared on the market, for example, electronic cigarette, water pipe and smokeless tobacco, and there is a lack of evidence about them. So for the clinical question, we want to know if there is a difference in peri-implant health status of different types of tobacco product users compared to non-smokers. We examined patients with dental implants who were using some kind of tobacco product and we compared them to non-smokers. Our primary outcome was the peri-implant crestal bone loss in millimeter and the secondary outcome were the clinical parameters, for example, probing packet depth, the bleeding on probing and the plug index and the pro-inflammatory cytokine levels. So our hypothesis was that different types of tobacco product users have worse clinical, radiographic and immunological peri-implant parameters compared to non-smokers. And why this topic is important? Because, as I have mentioned, smoking is one of the main risk factors of peri-implantitis, and with this comparison, we want to make a valuable education material for community dentistry. So the systematic search was done in four electronic databases with this following search key. And after the selection process, uh, we included 39 eligible articles. So here you can see uh, our outcomes. We have finished all of our analysis. The outcome measure was mean and standard deviation in all of our outcomes. And because of the shortage of time, I will only present the first two. So here you can see the primary outcome, which was the marginal bone loss measured in millimeter. You can see the network plot. So the uh, nodes represent the different kinds of tobacco products and the lines connecting them, so the network edges uh, representing the uh, direct comparisons between them. And we included 25 eligible articles in this analysis. Our first <coughs> figure is the rankogram. So the rankogram um, represents the ranking probability of the different tobacco products, and lighter color represents higher ranking. So uh, we can see that non-smokers had the smallest marginal bone loss, followed by electronic cigarette users, while water pipe and smokeless tobacco users had the biggest marginal bone loss. If you move on to the next figure, we can see uh, the heat plot, which represents the pairwise comparisons <coughs> between uh, the different products. And we can see that traditional cigarette smokers, water pipe smokers, and smokeless tobacco users had significantly higher marginal bone loss than uh, non-smokers. Let's move on to the second uh, outcome, which is the probing packet depth. It was also measured <coughs> in millimeter, and we included 18 articles in this analysis. So in the rankogram, also uh, non-smokers were ranked on the first place, and uh, the water pie smokers and smokeless tobacco users had the biggest probing packet depths, uh, meaning that they had the biggest inflammation around their implants. 
Traditional cigarette smokers, water pipes users, and smokeless tobacco users had significantly higher probing packet depths uh, when compared with the non-smokers, while there were no significant difference between uh, each tobacco product. So what are the strengths and the limitations of this analysis? So actually this was the first network meta-analysis comparing four types of tobacco products and non-smokers, and we were able to make uh, direct comparisons between most products, and we evaluated a variety of outcomes but we could only include observational studies, but actually randomized clinical trials are not possible in this topic. Um, and also in some networks there were a small number of studies and we experienced a high heterogeneity in patient characteristics. So in conclusion, we can say that non-smokers presented the best peri-implant parameters and using any type of tobacco product compromised peri-implant health. Uh, for the implication for practice, we can say that we should raise awareness of the harmful effects of tobacco products on peri-implant health, and we should dispel the misbelief that alternative tobacco products are not harmful. And the implication for research is that we need more multi-arm studies for direct comparisons and the greater transparency of confounding factors, for example, the smoking habit and the oral hygiene. Here you can see the manuscript status. So we uh, sent the manuscript to internal review and um, we are planning to submit it by uh, September. And our target journal is Tobacco Control, which is a D1 journal in the category of public health. So let's move on to my second topic, which is investigating the impact of smoking status and electronic cigarette use on non-surgical periodontal therapy. So periodontal diseases are actually the 11th most prevalent conditions, uh, and uh, if these are not treated, it can be a major cause of tooth loss. So subgingival debridement can be an effective treatment in reducing probing packet depths and improving the clinical attachment level. But we know that smoking can have a negative effect of the success of some gingival debridement, but there is no um, data about electronic cigarettes. So, uh, the aim of this analysis was to investigate the effect of traditional and electronic cigarette use on clinical outcomes of non-surgical periodontal therapy compared to non-smokers. So we used the PECO framework here. We examined patients with periodontitis undergoing non-surgical periodontal therapy, however, either using traditional cigarette or electronic cigarette, and we compared them to non-smokers, and we evaluated the clinical parameters and our hypothesis was that smoking traditional or electronic cigarette have a negative effect on clinical outcomes of non-surgical periodontal therapy compared to non-smokers. And again, with this comparison, we wanted to make an education material for community dentistry. So here you can see the systematic search. It was conducted in four electronic databases. We actually updated the search last week. So um, in the selection process, we are done with the duplicate removal and the title of text selection, and currently we are doing the full text selection with my selection pair. Uh, here you can see the overview of my project. Uh, I plan to submit the first project in September and the second one in December. Thank you for your attention. I would like to say goodbye with the quote by Nielsen. Successful people are not gifted, they just work hard, then succeed on purpose. Thank you for your presentation. I'm just uh, thinking about your opinion. What could be the explanation behind the different uh, smoke uh, types that I mean, water pipe is worse than traditional <coughs> cigarette regarding your outcomes. Yeah. And smokeless tobacco is the worst. So what, what, do, they, what do you think? Yeah, thank you for your question. So actually, there are some confounding factors which we have to consider, um, like uh, how they are using these products. So we know that um, when people use water pipe, they do it for a long time. So for example, one session is like half an hour, one hour, and they actually uh, use it more times a day. So um, this adds up. Uh, and also um, with the smokeless tobacco users, um, so they actually put it in the vestibule of their mouth and um, 
maybe uh, this can cause like some prac accumulation and also have some local effect to the implant. Thank you. And one short question: Did this person uh, used only one type? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was an exclusion criteria okay. if someone used both of them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, as we all saw in the first presentation of the dentistry group, uh, in Martin's presentation, uh, he showed us that in some cases, uh, passive smoking might be more, even more harmful than active smoking. So I was wondering if uh, there are any studies that compare maybe the passive smoking with the other types of uh, smoking and if there there is any reason that you couldn't or didn't include it in your uh, analysis. Yeah, thank you for your question. So I think in this specific topic there uh, is like no study about passive smoking because um, if you just passive smoke, it just don't get in your mouth. <laughs> um, so maybe that's why. Um, actually there are some um, articles about former smokers, but not passive smokers.